For decades, thousands of vulnerable migrants have been forced to work on illegal fishing boats in the deep ocean. Cheated into dangerous unpaid labor, beaten and stopped, they suffered for years without help. While thousands were liberated, many have been forgotten or abandoned. New rules have been put in place, but exploitation and corruption continue. Forced labor is still continuing under this condition. Can those fighting back put an end to slavery at sea? ที่ผ่านมาเนี่ยกิจการในเรือประมงเนี่ยเราไม่ได้ให้ความสําคัญกับชีวิตของคนในเรือเรามีแค่คําถามว่าเหมือนอาหารทะเลที่เรากินเน
smaller boats transferred the catch to Thailand so the illegal vessels could avoid going into ports. Workers were issued fake identity papers in case of spot checks. Out of desperation, many workers tried to escape, but died while trying to swim to shore. Even those who made it were imprisoned or stranded in some of the most remote places in the world. จุดที่เราช่วยคนได้มานี่สุดก็อยู่ที่อัมบุนอยู่อันนี้คือจังหวัดมาลูกุนะคะต้องใช้เวลา 2968 In response to these revelations, the Indonesian government started banning Thai fishing vessels from their waters in 2014. They arranged to send those rescued home, arrested the boat captains, and sunk dozens of illegal foreign fishing boats in a dramatic display of force. And the story gained the world's attention. Pressure on the Thai government increased, and they too began to make changes. The initial pressure came from the media exposés, global attention focused on Thai fishing and the seafood industry. But it was soon followed by uh, pressure from the American government. They changed their rating. They downgraded the Thai effort to combat uh, trafficking, and the European Union laid on the, the Thai industry a yellow card, a warning. That kind of negative attention created pressure on the government and on the industry to fix not just the illegal fishing problem, but the labor problem, too. Thailand is the fourth largest seafood exporter in the world. The industry employs more than 800,000 people, bringing in over 6 billion US dollars every year. Um, three additional speakers who are here with us today, Mr. Jason Judge. Thank you, sir. After the EU yellow card was issued, the Thai government began working with the International Labour Organization, the United Nations Agency, to improve laws that would apply to the fishing industry. The changes to the Thai legal framework, changes to Thai law over the last few years have uh, been a big deal. Among other things, the Thai government has applied labor law that applied to work on land to work on the sea. That's a big deal. The Thai government also ratified a couple of ILO conventions. At this point, we don't have any human trafficking at all in the fishery. The after part of the country, still a lot of problem. It's a big country, uh, but the fishery is easily monitored. So I don't think we have any at all. But a recent ILO report reveals otherwise. We ran through the elements of forced labor, involuntariness, coercion, and in the end determined that 14% of the fishers we surveyed are in forced labor situations. The new rules have changed the nature of exploitation, but they have not eradicated it. Forced labor 
has to have two elements. The work has to be involuntary and it has to be coercive. In Thai fishing, not too many years ago, there was a much higher level of violence, threats of violence, and that was used to, to hold fishers on boats. And now we see something different in that it's harder to see and it's usually connected to pay and debt and withholding of payment. More than 90% of Thailand's fishing industry workforce are migrants from some of the poorest parts of Southeast Asia. So how do these vulnerable workers end up risking their freedom and their lives? Moe works at the Migrant Education Center in Kartong, a Myanmar border town next to Ranong, one of Thailand's busiest ports. Every day, he helps Myanmar people crossing back from Thailand with paperwork and legal issues. Today, He's assisting a woman whose husband died on a Thai fishing boat and whose body was lost at sea. Okay. In 2015, at the height of the crackdown, Mo Wei was right in the thick of it. As part of Thailand's new initiative to stop trafficking, it sent naval patrols to inspect fishing boats far from shore. But they needed help communicating with the Myanmar workers on board. So <laughs> Mo Wei used to work on fishing boats himself, and he knows the risks better than most. กูน่ะเปียวเลยเตะเลือดลูกอ่ะเลี้ยวบาเลยดิมาเสร็จแต่ไกลได้ด้วยล่ะกูผิดเลยขาดเปียมาตัวช่วยลูกอันนี้ย
and many employers try to resolve this by turning to deception and coercion. Once they are trapped in the middle of the ocean, workers have no power to negotiate and no one to turn to for help. In 2015, the Thai government began using GPS tracking systems to monitor vessels out at sea. They also started inspecting fishing boats that docked at Thai ports to check for compliance with the new rules. The best instrument that we have put in is the what they call pipe, part in, part out, where they inspect workers, whether they have their rights and being looked after or not, and all the contracts and so on. We actually send vessels out into the sea and stop the vessel and look whether they're still complying. Thai law as it applies to fishing has gotten a lot better over the last few years. But hard as that is, the really hard part is making them stick at the port level. So acting out those, those new rules in dozens of ports around the country, and inevitably there are ways to work around the new rules. So officials are often just left at port and they're reduced to reviewing documents and asking questions of skippers and crews to figure out what happened out there, and that's inherently difficult. PIPO inspections have been criticized by groups like LPN and Human Rights Watch. They assert that superficial inspections mean that labor abuses are rarely identified. The National Fisheries Association, an alliance of Thai boat and business owners, claims trafficking of migrant workers has stopped and that the new rules are now too strict. <laughs> จะมีโทษปรับตามมาตราร้อยห้าสิบสามก็คือมีโทษปรับสี่แสนหนึ่งแปดแสนและยึดใบญาติทำการประมงด้วยซึ่งมันเป็นโทษค่อนข้างรุ
But some vessel owners have taken control of Fisher's ATM cards. One worker wanted to share his experience, so he sent a video and photos to the production team. He requested he stay anonymous. Forced labor is still continuing under this condition. They keep the document because they're not allowed the fishers to move around or to change to the boat. คืออันเนี้ยน่าจะเข้าใจผิดแล้วก็ต้องไปฟังความสองข้างกฎหมายใหม่เนี่ยค่อนข้างแรงยึดเอกสารถือว่าเป็นเป็นแรงงานบังค
Satisfied that it is really his brother, Tinto tries to explain to his dad that our nine has been found. ตัวไข่แม่เออเออฮะไปเปลี่ยนจริงล่ะเออเออเออบ่าบ่าดิเนาะอุ่นนายเกเธอดิบ้านเนาะเนาะอุ่นนายโมโกดเบอร์ตอ
Kurang ya, wah ibu perlu biru. Isteri. Kurang apa? Mina tu yang mana? Mina tu yang mana? Kurang apa? 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 Tua di lengan yang cuan jenis ini. Ame jingo kau ne webi ngero nawe, pasang omo ne webu webi jau ne. Kuli mami ya jingo jono lawe, jadi mimi, jadi wami. Ne jema pasang cuan ye saro malue, jadi gade lay pi malu amu we. Moe has noticed a trend in the past few months. Malaysia, Indonesia, Panama, yang sana ni, saya net jojo, oh kau net jojo tu lah. Biar saya bayar saya ni net tiga hilal apa? Naya ada lu, yang sana kahdi ada lu, naya senyap bang kahaya ada lu suhiro. Saya memang orang tua. Bisa tu naya dewa ada kahdi ada kekep ada bisa tu tu. To further crack down on migrants crossing the border to work illegally, Thailand and Myanmar recently signed a Memorandum of Understanding. This MOU provides Myanmar workers to tie fisheries officially and legally. If a worker's rights are violated, they can go through a formal process for restitution. But it's not been smooth sailing entirely. Under the MOU, contracts and paperwork are processed by official agencies, creating the illusion of a safety net for workers. Unfortunately, problems have been known to emerge after the contracts are signed. Aku ini sih pola lah, biar. Emu itu sendiri pola. Pola ada cemerlang, jadi nolong balai itu. Di ini sih leh, dia awak ni lesen, dua kuba lo, lesen cakap lagi itu. Dah sih sih pemain tu. Bayar terus tu kawan meja. Tahu saya yang ini nolong kawan, yang kau ni saya yang ini nolong kawan meja. Although Thailand has made changes over the years, complacency and corruption are threatening to undermine the achievements. นี่อาจจะคุยเรื่องมิวต์มิวต์เราตัวเทชูลาเราเลยเพื่ออะไรอ่ะเอ๊ะเลยมาพี่อาเลยว่าเป็นภาษาอังกฤษมาพี่อา
the foreign flag vessels uh, is, uh, is less. Years of inconsistent regulation has made it impossible to track how some vessels have been traded over time. It's legal for Thai vessel to be sold abroad and for workers to work if the owner really is the owner. It's, there's no law saying that you're a Thai vessel, you're always Thai vessel. If there is actually no owner abroad, but the owner here is the real owner, then we have to prosecute. But it's very difficult to do that. We don't really even have a good list of how many Thai ships have been so abroad. The largest and most notorious overseas fishing boats have mostly been seized or sunk, but there are hundreds more unaccounted for. Some larger boats are now thought to be fishing near Africa under country flags with almost no maritime regulations, like Mongolia. Other Thai boats have been renamed and reflagged in Myanmar, where there is much less scrutiny. เกลี้ยตัวอ่ะเกลี้ยเลยเกลี้ยตัวอ่ะเราจะโนโลเป็นแล้วมาดีเลยเลยจะโนโลอ่ะงาตกเกล่ะเกลี้ยรู้สิก
ya mereka dulu memang betul di kapal kita naik speed sana kampungnya jadi itu ya hampir setengah jam begitu ya itu kan karena kemanusiaan karena begini mereka kan hilang jejak tidak tahu kata di mana mana begitu pak hilang dari kampung asalnya begitu jadi ada yang pulang ada yang belum ya kita bantu aja lah kemanusiaan kan pada mereka tinggal sini mungkin ya Oi assalamualaikum sudah ketemu keluarga, iya kakak laki-laki dan keluarga bapak mama. Bapak mama masih meninggal kan? Masih itu. Masih. Nang, kamu kau be tolak ya ya, baik aku saya. Anak suka ni sudah apa? Cucu dua lah, eh. Bapak Bima. Di sini. Di sini. Semua ini. Ah semua, semua kenal semua surat Papa Mama. Iya. Dalam ini. Minta pulang. Minta pulang. Di sini saya. Ya sepuluh lebih juga. Ya kita ada sepuluh lebih tujuh belas lapan belas begitu. Kangen, kang, kangen ketidak sama saudara di sana di bir memohon sana. Kangen ketidak. Rindu, rindu kan, rindu mana jauh dia ketemu kita susah juga. Danny has a phone number for Ang Nang's family. They decide to try and make a call, but the area has no cellular reception. Ong Nain has to walk to the other side of the island in the hope of getting a signal. Aun nai ni, so dia belum. Habah tu, habah tu, so habah leh ni. Tu, ni tu ni. Tu habah. Nah, coba dia. Nenek, nenek, nenek. Mang mud mah. Iyo. Mang mud mang, mimi sak. Pau mana kau? Ah, pau mana semua ti. Pau mana kau dole kakak, abang dole. Mud mah, mud mah. Kalau mau uma, awak nak pulang ke? Eh, awak masih pulang lah. Awak nak masih pulang lah. So kahwin, so ada anak, so mati lah. So mati kah, bapa? So dah sinyal itu putu-putu. Awak mau pulang? Udah selubat sih, so dah lama ni. Ini sih, so hilang lah. Kerasi kita hilang lah. Pulang ketom minta isen anak-anak di sini dulu. Ketom pulang langsung di sini bisa. Yang itu saya ada, tahu tak ada ketom aduh ketom bapa pulang tu bapa balik lagi. Tepisa. Ini ketom pulang sendiri lor. Itu saya ada ketom aduh bagaimana? Yang ini saya ada juga. Sini pulang lah. Saya mati sini hidup sini. Ang Nain didn't want to talk about his experience on the fishing boat. Like many former fishermen, he has suffered a lot in his life. I'm going to go to the
After returning to Myanmar, Ong Ye Tung managed to get a job working for his family at a makeshift gold mine. ဆက်ချောက်စခုံဆက်ရှိစခုတွေပဲအဲ့အရွယ်တွေပဲပါအဲ့အရွယ်ဒီကိုတမိပြဖြစ်ကြောက်ကြလေးပဲဖြစ်